I guess it's my assumption when the organist stops playing, I have to start talking. <laughs> Good morning. <clears throat> Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we gather from around the community, from around the county, and from around the country. As we gather today to celebrate some baptisms, as we gather to hear your word preached and proclaimed, and we begin worship mindful that there are those who are struggling for peace in our world. And sometimes that peace involves meeting in summits around the world to settle some age-old differences. And sometimes those peace talks are held on the floors of Parliament and Congress. And sometimes those peace talks are more than simply words but are actions. For Lord, we know that there are many who wish us harm. And for the peacemakers and peacekeepers here in our communities who watch over us and protect us, as well as those on the front lines defending our freedoms, protecting our liberty, and keeping us safe in the armed services, we thank you for their service. Loving God, watch over them. Keep them safe. And we offer this prayer in the name of Jesus who came as the Prince of Peace. In his name we pray. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us welcome one another in the name of Christ.
think we'll play a little something. I think. I'm okay with that. You have to put it on. I got my little here. Okay. okay. It's good because I feel it. Two weeks ago, I, I went. I had to sit in the back. I couldn't stay in the pew. I can't. I don't like the heat I don't when it when I can't breathe. You know, if the air's moving, even yep. if it's hot. Yep. Yeah, you can go ahead. We'll get this. We'll get this back going. Please join me in the call of worship. God has blessed us with every blessing. Blessings from the Holy Land. Blessings from the Savior. God has blessed us with every blessing. Christ has blessed us with every blessing. Blessings from the Holy Presence. Blessings from the Holy Presence. Christ has blessed us with every blessing. God has blessed us with every blessing. Let us reply with our worship. Our hymn is 108, God Has Spoken by the Prophets.
Please join me in the opening prayer you'll find printed in the bulletin. Holy God, you are deserving of the very best we have to offer. The devotion of our hearts, the place of honor in our priorities, and the first fruits of our labors. We enter this place and space of worship, asking you to be in our midst, to speak your message of love and mercy, conviction and challenge to us. We welcome your spirit, knowing that in so doing, we abandon control and open ourselves in faith and trust to your purposes and plan, rather than our own. Come, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, we pray, and may our worship be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Would the children please come forward for a story? Good morning. Boy, you have grown. It's been a while since I've seen most of you. I'm Reverend Van Wee. You remember me, thank you. And I want to tell you a story this morning. Last night we were getting ready to go to the county fair. In fact, we parked our car and we're getting out of the car when, when uh, Miss Carol Plemons called and let me know that Reverend Penny, Pastor Penny, was ill and wanted to know if I could uh, lead worship this morning. And I said, sure, I'd love to. And at the fair last night we saw some animals and they were really cool. I love the alpacas and the, and the, and the, um, uh, the alpacas probably are my favorite, the llamas. They're just really cool. They're so gentle and so sweet looking. They do spit though, so you got to be careful. But as you're getting ready to leave the fair last night, our granddaughter was working at a funnel cake booth. You know what they are? They're little things about this big and they're pretty thin and they're like dough and they fry it. And I love it. It's really, really good. Except I like mine with lots and lots of powdered sugar. And I was wearing a pair of very nice black shorts. <laughs> with, you know where this is going, I can tell. And I had a nice kind of a dark t-shirt on. And guess what happened? Oh, it was off. It was all over me. I thought, what I needed last night, I needed one of these. Because if I had one of these last night, I would have been able to turn it, oh wait, oh, silly, needs a battery. Oh. There we go, let's see here. Battery, ready? I had to turn it and go, there. Would have cleaned myself right up, wouldn't I? When I see dirt in the floor, I can go, just like that and clean it up. Am I doing a good job? <laughs> you know, th I'm not doing a good job. What's well, a vacuum cleaner, right? Maybe. Oh, you don't think me making noise is working? I can. I can make lots of noise. Isn't that what a vacuum cleaner does? It does, doesn't it? Guess what? I bet my battery's no good. I probably need a new battery. And guess what? I happen to have one. Does that sound better? Yeah. What's the purpose of a vacuum cleaner. Yes. It cleans up messes. That makes sense? Yeah. What good's a vacuum cleaner that doesn't vacuum up messes? Any good? I know it's bothering me too, isn't it? I don't, can I think I can catch it with my vacuum cleaner? Maybe. We'll try it later. But a vacuum cleaner needs to be able to 
suck up dirt and yuck and messes. We think about different things like that's what a vacuum cleaner exists for. What does, I won't turn it on again, okay. What does a Christian do? Hmm. See, we believe in Jesus. We follow Jesus. So if a vacuum cleaner exists to vacuum up messes, I wonder what the job of a Christian is. We're going to talk about that this morning in my big story. Because Jesus said that the job of his followers, the job of a Christian, is to bear fruit. We'll talk a little bit about what that means in my big story this morning. But it's doing good things for people. It's like being loving and kind and caring about people. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for the vacuum cleaners that clean up all the messes in our lives. We also thank you that we're followers of Jesus. And how he told us it's important to, to bear fruit. And how it's important to care for other people. And to show your love for the world. I ask you to watch over these children. Bless them, Lord, and keep them safe. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I got a treat for you this morning. Come on over. Probably your moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas would probably appreciate you eating these maybe after church. They're a little sticky. They're really good. Rice crispy treats, but they're also kind of sticky. Okay. Got one. That, oops, sorry. There you go, Pumpkin. Good, good morning, Dela. Oops. You guys have a great day, okay? Thanks for coming up. Hi. You do? I was at his baptism. That was cool. Go back to your seats, okay? Thank you. Thank you. What's next? Hi. Thank you. Where he leads me, I will follow. As we gather to worship, we, we bring with us all that we are and also all that we hope to be. We bring with us the events of this past week, our, our high points as well as, as the low points. At this time, I believe it's your custom to lift up your joys and concerns. Are the concerns you have this morning or are there joys? Is that something you handle, Lou? I, I have joys. Uh, one is like I never thought I'd be here with him again. <laughs> And that is a joy. Thank you. Um, I had said a couple of weeks ago, a friend of mine that I had been fishing with in Quebec had a, uh, came home and a week or two later had a massive heart attack. Um, he's fine now. Uh, he was in a, like, uh, I guess an induced coma for a week. Uh, his heart was real weak. A week ago Friday, they finally took the tubes out and he's fine. And the same Friday, the same day, he became a grandpa of a grandson and a granddaughter, twins. Oh. So that is awesome. Oh. First really name? awesome. Really Thank awesome. you. His first name, Lou? First one, yeah. His first name? Uh, Richard. Richard. Richard Gorman. Richard, thank yes. you. And uh, keep prayers for my brother-in-law who's going through cancer problems, prostrate, and uh, <laughs> so many people go through this, but... Um, He's having a real rough time and it's aggressive, so keep uh, uh, Rich Nyer in our, in our prayers too. Thank you. So Leanne, Penny's having us do God sightings also. Yes. And so I have a God sighting. So God sighting this week, if, you're, if any of you are on Facebook, uh, saw a 50th anniversary cake for a couple of our special Asbury folks, Paul and Debbie Simmons. And then also on Facebook is a musical tribute by Andy Taylor at Tin Pan, which they were dining at, and it's a beautiful tribute to them. So that's my God sighting 50th anniversary, Paul and Debbie. Yes, Lynn. I'd like to, uh, we're, we're certainly blessed to have Aldersgate in our backyard. And we had three kids go for the week, and seven kids went for the one-day adventure. It was a wonderful day. Nice. 
Their camp begins this week, today? Friday. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. And I'm a proud grandfather of two of the children that were there, Eliana and Kiara, and they had a great time both with horses and with a very special tent. And today we're very thankful to have their mom with us. You remember Maria. So we're having a very special time with all of them. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. So I had asked earlier for um, some prayers with regards to some things uh, for my trip for Ethiopia. And one of them was that I would be able to get a yellow fever vaccine uh, because there was a national shortage. And um, your prayers must have worked. I, found, I got it uh, this last Tuesday that was after scheduling in Rochester, having them call me and tell me that they didn't have it. And then I called them back and they said, well, I guess maybe we have one dose left we can give you. So it, it finally did work anyway. And so I, I want to thank you guys for your prayers and let you know uh, things are going well. I'm gearing up and I'll be leaving on the two weeks, on the 28th. So uh, a, little, a little shorter than that. So I'm, I'm getting excited, but that did work. And thank you for your prayers. Thank you. Are there others? Ori. We need prayers for Pastor Penny, praying that she can beat this stomach bug. Thank you. Let us pray. Loving and all-present God, we give you praise and thanks for bringing us here to worship you this day. As we gather to worship, we bring to you the highlights of this past week, the joys that touched our hearts and our souls, as well as the concerns that we hold deep. It's good to be back in the pulpit this morning. Today we pause and lift up Richard and Rich. We celebrate with Paul and Debbie their 50th wedding anniversary. For the gift of Camp Aldersgate and the way that they change lives, we give you thanks. Having granddaughters and daughters present at worship is always a highlight. Lord, for the ways that we change the world through our mission work, especially the work that Dr. Rudd will be doing in Ethiopia, we give you praise and thanks. We also pause and lift up Pastor Penny. Be with her in this midst of this illness. We pray for speedy recovery. Lord, may your healing hand touch her this day. And we offer all these prayers in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. our darkness bright. He keeps watch all through each long and lonely night. He still finds the time to hear a child's first prayer. Saved or sinner, 
clouds and turn the gray to blue. He alone knows where to find the rainbows and he alone can see what lies behind the band. He can touch a tree and turn the leaves to gold. He knows every lie that you and I have told. Though it makes him sad to see the In our hymnal this morning, our order of service for holy baptism. My brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are brought into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. At this time, I present for holy baptism Emma Morris and Quinn Morris. And I invite them to come forward at this time along with their sponsors. the very beginning of the Christian church. Hi. Good morning. Hi. How are you? The order of holy baptism has consisted first in a series of questions that I'll be asking the parents. Followed by the church's response because the church believes that raising children is a tough job. Do I get an amen? amen. The church takes responsibility for that process. So I begin by asking, on behalf of the church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of the world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression, whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Will you nurture these children in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? Do you as the body of Christ being called Asbury United Methodist Church Reaffirm both your rejection of sin and commitment to Christ. We do. 
We nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Emma and Quinn now before you in your care. With God's help, proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Emma and Quinn with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their service to others. We'll pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Emma. Good morning, how are we doing? You've grown some. Yeah. Yes. I baptize you. And you have God the Father. God the Son. And God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hi. Come and see me. Good morning. Hi. How are you? Yes. Yes. Your name is Quinn. Hi, Quinn. How are you? And Quinn, I baptize you. In the name of God the Father. God the Son. And God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes. And we had two good girls today for the baptism. Get mama. Ma. Mom. Get mom. Picking up at the bottom of page 42. To Emma and to Quinn, may the Holy Spirit be at work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may become faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Now it is our joy to welcome our new sisters in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to you for your love and your care. I ask of you and require of you to do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. Thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. And for Quinn, we have a a book she'll come to read and we have an application Bible for Emma and a certificate for Carrie and a certificate for Quinn let's welcome the newest members of God's family congratulations you go back to your seats Our scripture reading today uh, has changed, as our leader has. <laughs> this morning's scripture reading is from the New Testament Gospel of John. I will be reading from the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 8. The translation will be used as called the New American Standard Bible and was written in 1960. John chapter 15, beginning in verse 1. I am the true vine, 
and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it is, abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. You who abides in me and I in him. He bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and cast them into the fire and they burn them. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, ask whatever you wish and I will be, it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and so provide to my disciples, prove to be my disciples. This is a word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Uh, as a preacher, I've had the opportunity a number of times this past year to go into churches and uh, worship, and I always look at the sermon and wondering what the preacher's going to do with it. Uh, this morning, we also welcome the Reverend Sung Ah Joy, 
from Carthage and Champion United Methodist Churches, who's enjoying a, a Sunday off. Her and her family are here today. And I'm not sure, Song Ah, when you go into church, but I always try to figure out what the preacher's going to do with a title called Status Quo. And you can wonder a lot because I have no idea. <laughs> and since my sermon title's not even listed, hopefully by the end of my sermon you'll have some idea what my title might be. Let us pray. Loving God, we gather to hear a word this morning. And sometimes that word is through the awesome music. And sometimes we are touched by the word we hear in a, in a special prayer. Or maybe a call to worship or our sending forth. Maybe we sense a word from you as we pass the peace in the congregation. My hope is that we'll also hear a word this morning in these words that I share. For my hope and prayer is that you might use me. Strengthen me. Bless me. Inspire me. We offer this in the name of Christ. Amen. Michael Morgenstern had written a book called How to Love a Woman. And in the book, he lifted up ways for us men in particular to, to let women know that we love them. And one of his emphasis was to, to express sensitivity and to show our sensitive sides to the women in our lives, especially our spouses. And it was actually on the New York Times bestseller list for a number of weeks. Uh, Michael Morgenstern also made the news while his book was on the best-selling list uh, by having been arrested. His girlfriend at the time was Ethel Parks, who was a fashion model. And the way that Michael Morgenstern explains it is, I let my temper get the best of me. And in the process, he hit his girlfriend with a fist in her jaw, broke the jaw and broke off a tooth. Within a few days after that arrest, his book miraculously was no longer on the bestseller list. I guess if you want to be sensitive towards women, you don't hit them. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? See, I think Jesus would have loved that story. Not that for a second he would have condoned abuse in any way. But he would appreciate the fact that what you say and what you do need to be the same. And if this is your standard, hitting a woman kind of doesn't bring you up to that bar. It doesn't bring you up to the standard you set forth in this book that you have written. Jesus puts it this way. People will know that you're my disciples because you bear fruit. Does that make sense? Sure it does. I mean, it's important that we, that we know the Ten Commandments, right? For example, when I say, number four, what is it? Okay, you got the... It's the God thing and graven images and this and fourth one is about the Sabbath. Oh yeah, that one. Okay. Well, you knew that. I knew you knew that. You got Ten Commandments. It's important to know the Ten Commandments. What about the nine Beatitudes? Or how many are there? Man. <laughs> Pastor Penny has her work cut out for her, I can tell. <laughs> There are eight Beatitudes. There's eight of them. And it's important to know them. Blessed are the so and so and so and so. And it's nice to be able to offer prayers and make the angels sing and make the archangels say praise the Lord. That's important to do. And it's awesome in the shower, for example, to sing, And he shall reign forever and ever. Hallelujah! 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 
it's great to know the words to the Messiah. That's good stuff. But the bottom line for Jesus is you got to bear fruit. You got to bear fruit. 2,000 years ago, the followers of Jesus did just that. And of the 12 disciples, it cost 11 of them their lives. For example, James, who we believe is some relation to Jesus, would have been killed by a mob in Jerusalem, as would have been James, Zebedee's son. Matthew was hit by a sword in Ethiopia. Philip was hanged in Phygera. Bartholomew was flayed alive in Armenia. Andrew was crucified in Archaea. Thomas was run through by a lance in East India. Thaddeus was shot to death with arrows. Simon the Zealot was hung on a cross in Persia. Apostle Peter, at his own request, was hung upside down because he didn't think he should die with the honor of hanging right side up as Jesus did. And Matthias, who picked up when Judas did that weird dumb thing, was beheaded. The only disciple to die a natural death was John, who was in exile and died at a rather elderly age. Because they were bearing fruit. They were making a difference. And, and the stories that Jesus told about the Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan is a story about a priest and Levite. Were they knowledgeable about the law? Of course. Did they love God? Yes, they did. But in their journeying, when they saw a person who was injured, they walked by on the other side. In other words, they did not bear fruit. Lazarus, poor Lazarus, lay outside the gate of a rich man. A rich man who undoubtedly was um, a very pillar of the community, very influential, very wealthy, but blind to the poverty around him. And Jesus ends the story by saying, in the end, Lazarus goes to heaven, rich man goes to hell. Why? He didn't bear fruit. And there were some stories about fig trees. When Jesus walking along looks and sees a fig tree, but there's no figs on it. He says, cursed be you, and the fig tree dies. Because why do fig trees exist? To produce fruit. It's a challenge. As we look at different people in our lives to see the, the fruit that they happen to be bearing. The disciples some 2,000 years ago certainly bore fruit. Another one I'd like to mention this morning is uh, Martin Nemal who was a Lutheran pastor during World War II. And at the time, some in the Lutheran church in Germany were supportive of Adolf Hitler. Martin Emo, however, was not. And in fact, he ended up in a concentration camp. And probably Martin is best known for the following quote. First they came for the communists. I didn't speak out because I was not a communist. Then they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, but I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and no one was left to speak out for me. That's probably his best known quote of his entire life. But in a concentration camp, the Nazis wanted to break him. So they found that there was an atheist also in the concentration camp and they had this great idea that they would place the atheist in the same cell as Martin Nemoral. Put him in the same cell and they encouraged them to talk. And the atheist was brilliant. A great debater, a great thinker, very intelligent, able to lay out a, a logical reason why God did not exist. And they talked back and forth for four days. In fact, they also allowed them to go for their half-hour walks together every day. Again, talking back and forth about what their belief systems were. On the fifth day, after having been conversing back and forth for four days, the atheist asked Martin Nemoel if he could borrow his Bible because he'd been touched about this guy by the name of Jesus. 
On the fifth day, the atheist was removed from Nimoyle's cell. Because Pastor Nimoyle bore fruit. He bore fruit. It's been said, a life well lived is always the more effective witness than words well said. I like that phrase. A life well lived is always more effective witness than words well said. Ben Franklin was a, a brilliant thinker a number of years ago, but well known, of course, for the electrical thing. But also he had done some work with agriculture. And he went to some of his colleagues and said, I have discovered that plaster, the plaster we use on walls, will help our crops to grow. And people said, well, that's dumb. No, no, it works. It, it, it helps them to grow. And they said, no, it doesn't make sense. Well, they argued some, and Ben Franklin realized that arguing with them would make no sense at all. The next spring, Franklin went out in the field and with his hand drew some letters in the soil. He then planted some seeds and he put some plaster, which is basically lime. He put some lime in the, in the, on top of the seeds and covered it up. And as us right along the walkway where people would walk and see that he had written some words in the field. And the words he wrote were, this has been plastered. Where the words, this has been plastered, happened to be greener than all the other fields. The crops were more abundant than all the other crops in the entire field. It's a matter of bearing fruit, isn't it? We think about a few years ago, back in 1984. I'm working on this, Herb. I'm working on this. Early morning phone call this morning to Herb. Jackie Joyner, who is subsequently married, was the favored individual to win the heptathlon. 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 Don't ask me again because I'll mess it up. Heptathlon is a seven sporting event Olympic thing. They do four one day and three the next. And she was favored to win this. However, in her first competition in 1984, she came in second and got a silver gold medal. Her brother Al uh, was, I think, a jumper. And I think that he did get a gold in 84 for his jumping. She came back in 88 and ran the heptathlon. Heptathlon. And uh, she won it. In fact, she, her record currently stands today. When she was interviewed about this much later, she commented and said that we're from East, uh, we're from East St. Louis. And East St. Louis is known for one thing. High crime. My brother and I have shown that East St. Louis is known for something more than just high crime. It was her way of bearing fruit. We see that in different people's lives, don't we? Time and time again, we see how people can make a difference. When we think about the fruit that we bear, it's important to know that good fruit begins with a good root, doesn't it? And the stuff that's around the root to make it grow. Now, the analogy here that Jesus is using kind of falls flat when you think about a carrot or a radish or a rhubarb or what else is a fruit that is a root? A vegetable that's a root. Potatoes? Beets? Because when you think about the root of a beet is actually the fruit of the beet. But in most things, if you got a good root and a good foundation, you're going to bear good fruit. So what are some of the good fruits of us bearing fruit in our faith? 
This would probably go back to the beginning of my sermon this morning, talking about the Ten Commandments. Knowing the Ten Commandments kind of helps. Following the Ten Commandments, that's important too. Knowing the Beatitudes is good stuff. Coming to worship, praising God, is all good stuff. This is all the, the roots of our faith. It's all the stuff that we stand upon that makes us able to bear fruit. A couple hundred years ago, in fact, 234 years ago, John Wesley knew that as he was beginning our Methodist church. That's why Wesley was strong into personal piety. He emphasized the fact that we need to look inwardly to get our lives right with God. That's important. It's important for Wesley. It's important for all of us people who call ourselves Methodists. We need this personal sense of piety. But Wesley linked this personal inward looking to social holiness. Because he knew that what we do a bearing fruit is equally important in the world. And if all it's about is Jesus and me, if it's about me coming to church Sunday and coming back to church next Sunday doing nothing in between, then Jesus is pretty clear that we're not bearing fruit. It's important to look inward. It's important to get our lives right with God, but it can't stop there. As Jesus was preparing his disciples for the work that laid ahead of them, he knew that the bearing of fruit would make a difference. And if they wouldn't do it, nothing of what he did or said would matter. Because if these 12 did not carry on his work and his ministry, his life would have been for nothing. A story about a, uh, an oil mach a machine oil company offering tours. Individuals went and were going through this company, looking at all the ways the machines made their oil. And at the end of the tour, one of the, one of the people on the tour said, so, so where's your shipping department? I said, well, what do you mean? Well, well, the products you produce that you sell. Oh, we don't sell any of it. We just make the oil to make our machines work. I guess that was poor delivery, wasn't it? <laughs> the oil machine company didn't produce any oil to sell. It just produced oil to make the machine work that then produced the machine and produced oil to make the... I'll have to work on that one. i got to work on that one a little more. My friends, that's not what Jesus is calling the church to be. We must have a shipping department. We must be involved in bearing fruit in the world. So here's my challenge. How will you bear fruit this week? In the name of Jesus. How will you bear fruit today? In the name of Jesus Christ. What difference will the world have because you're in it? For the sake of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, you're going to prove to be my disciples because you bear fruit. So next week, you come back to church, you've done nothing this past week, guess what? You failed. Bottom line is you failed. We're called to bear fruit. Let's go do it. Thanks be to God. Amen. One way that we bear fruit is to support the mission and ministry of the church and all that God calls us to be and all that God calls us to become. At this time, the ushers will receive our morning offering.
Please join me. We are God's own people, made holy because God is holy. These gifts we offer as God's people. Bless them, God, and send them as a blessing to share love, hope, peace, and joy. Amen. Our closing hymn is, I'm going to live so God can use me. Hymn number 2153 in the faith we sing hymnal. 2153. be seated. I know that probably many of you thought I was whistling during that. that. <laughs> it wasn't me. I want to fess up. It was not me. Good job. I thank you. So what do you think I'm going to say now? Yeah, bear fruit. Pretty clear to me. I mean, Jesus didn't beat around the bush. Get it? Bush? Fruit? Ah. He's pretty clear. A lot of things we can do, and, and knowing the Ten Commandments is good stuff, and the Beatitudes is all good stuff, and being able to sing and praise God is good stuff. But if all we do is worship and leave and do nothing in between worships, I think we failed to be the disciple Jesus is calling us to be. Because the bottom line is we've got to bear fruit. And we do that in such a variety of ways. The ways that we serve and love other people. The way that we care for the least, the lost, the last. That's the way that we bear fruit. How will you bear fruit today, tomorrow, and this week?
We are sent by God to be God's people in the world. We will go to sing of God's joy and hope to all. We are called by Christ, adopted into God's gracious family. We will go to share the good news of Christ's grace for everyone. We are chosen by the Spirit to care for the serve, for the ser and serve creation. We will go to join hands with our sisters and brothers in every moment. Amen. Amen. Place. You know, it's everybody still said, and they expected you to say, God brought us here, and God sent us here. Well, I didn't know what I was supposed to say. You were supposed to say that. This has been a broadcast of the 1015 service, Sunday morning, from Asbury United Methodist Church, located on Franklin Street in Watertown. Asbury United Methodist Church.